Hi, everybody. Uh, excited to have you here at Platform Con. I'm going to be talking to you about why you should be using Argo CD to deploy your applications to Kubernetes. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Dan Garfield. I am a co founder and was chief open source officer of a company called CodeFresh. And we were recently acquired by the fantastic Octopus Deploy, where we have a mission to simplify software delivery for every kind of application for everyone on the planet. Uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, I'm quite outspoken in both the Argo project, where I am an, a maintainer uh, on Argo CD, and also on Open GitOps, where I am a co-creator and uh, of the Open GitOps standard, as well as the GitOps working group, where I focused a lot on how we deliver software and learning from the best organizations in the world and how they've been doing it for over 20 years. Um, if uh, you don't know where to find me, I am on Twitter at Today Was Awesome, and I'd love to hear from you if you enjoyed this talk uh, or you hate it. But let's see, uh, let's see how we do, and we'll jump into it. Uh, so first off, if you're not familiar with the Argo project, uh, it's really four projects. There's Argo Workflows, Argo Events, Argo CD, and Argo Rollouts. Now, Argo Workflows and Argo Events are primarily uh, concerned with running workflows. So this is very common for data pipelines. Sometimes people use them for CI CD pipelines as well. But for software delivery, it's really about Argo CD and Argo rollout. So that's where we're going to be focused today. This is, of course, is a CNCF project. Now, the reason that people use Argo CD to deploy their software is ultimately because it will help you deploy more frequently, experience fewer failures, fewer regressions, recover from failures more quickly, and it will help you lower your lead time for changes. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit about why it is that Argo CD is just so effective at those things. Um, to convince you even further that you should not be sleeping on Argo CD, if you're not using this to deliver your software to Kubernetes, uh, I gotta tell you, uh, I'm very excited to be talking to you because you're gonna love <laughs> the impact this has on how you deliver software. Uh, in fact, it's been so successful that already a full 45%, almost half of anybody with Kubernetes in production, they're using Argo to deploy their software to Kubernetes. So already half the industry has adopted this. It's a fairly new project, uh, only a few years old. And so uh, the industry has clearly chosen that this is really the standard way of delivering software to Kubernetes. And I can talk a little bit about why that is in a moment. Um, and we, a few, a little while ago, we gave a talk, a, a keynote speak, uh, a keynote talk, I should say, with Peloton, and they found that they were able to uh, get their new developers onboarded 83% faster thanks to Argo CD. Now, the, the reason for this is, is because there's so much more clarity when you're using Argo CD about what's happening with your software, how it's operating, how to make changes, and ultimately creating really scalable processes there. Now, this uh, this study that we did with Peloton, uh, I think that they started off and it would take them, when they would onboard a new developer, it would take them about a month and a half to get their uh, first pull request up. And in this talk, we found that we could get that down to less than four days. So dramatically faster software delivery. And that just means, hey, those developers are more productive. That, that benefit pays forward into all the changes that they're going to do over the lifespan of their organization over, over the lifespan of their career. Um, and as a result, we've seen that the industry has really rewarded Argo CD uh, with an enormous amount of tension. If even if you look at GitHub stars, which is a very, it's a flawed metric. We know that GitHub stars is not perfect. We already said, Hey, half the people <laughs> that are deploying to Kubernetes in production are using Argo CD. I think that's a pretty impressive stat. But what we've seen is that uh, Argo CD has just continued to accelerate in its popularity. Now, all of this, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time, comes down to the core mechanics of how Argo CD treats software. So here, we're going to spend a few moments. Uh, let me let me change the layout so you can see this just a little bit better. Oh, I can't change the layout. Okay, um, this is GitOps. Now, GitOps is really simple. Basically, you have a desired state that needs to exist in Git. It doesn't have to be Git, but it needs to be some versioned and immutable store. And Git is very good at that. It's not the only version and immutable store, and you could use others. But uh, you have your desired state 
in a location where it's versioned and immutable. Uh, and this means you can switch back to a previous version, roll forward to a new version, and you will always get a predictable result. And the other part of that is that that desired state needs to be stored in a declarative format. Now, this is something that is a little bit new to software, but not totally new. People that have been using Terraform are familiar with declarative formats. Uh, this is, of course, contrasted with imperative formats. When I first started doing software, um, when I would make a, a patch and send it to an ops person to get deployed, I would often come with instructions and it would say, copy these files to this folder, do this, do that, whatever. Now, the problem with imperative operations is that they are flaky. They are prone to failure. Um, so by having your, your desired state stored in a declarative manner, you actually avoid all kinds of potential problems uh, that would come with failures in imperative operations. Now, of course, this means that you have to have an agent, a controller that is interpreting that declarative format and applying it for you. Um, and this is the other part, the other half of the GitOps equation is that you need something not only monitoring the desired state for changes, but you need something to also monitor the actual state of your system. Uh, because your actual state may be changing. It may be getting mutated in some way. Maybe someone has pushed a change that you didn't expect. This is why the old adage of CICD pipelines for deploying, that really came down to people saying, okay, what's in production? Well, I'll look at what my, last, my CICD pipeline last did, and I'll assume that that's what's in production. Um, that little assumption has been the cause of not only many failures of deployment, but a lot of downtime over the last 20 years as people have deployed um, to an actual state that was not what they expected. So we need something that's gonna monitor that actual state for changes. So if something diverges, we can make sure that the desired state is applied. This is where Argo and Kubernetes come in. Argo CD is the GitOps agent of choice for the Kubernetes world. It monitors both Git as well as uh, image repositories, OCI repositories for state the desired state for that state to change, to be updated. And that, that could be in the form of Helm charts, customize, uh, JSON it. It could just be plain Kubernetes manifests. And then it monitors the actual state from etcd coming from our Kubernetes cluster. And it will always make sure that the desired state is applied within the context of your policy. Now, um, we're going to talk for a moment about Argo here. Uh, in fact, the whole talk is about Argo. But um, when it comes to Argo CD, the way that this works is with something that we call an application. An application, you can think of it as a policy that states where the desired state is, typically in a Git repo, where the actual state is, typically a Kubernetes cluster, could be a specific namespace, could be many Kubernetes clusters, and then how those two should be reconciled. Uh, so for example, you can say that you want auto healing turned on. That means that if the actual state changes, so maybe a controller modifies a resource or maybe someone pushes a change manually or maybe the cluster uh, has some sort of deletion that happens or whatever, Argo CD will notice that. And if auto heal, self heal is turned on, it will automatically replace those resources and reset them back to what they were set in the desired state. Um, likewise, you can decide if you want to automatically synchronize or have manual sync. So for example, if I change a, a resource in Git, Argo will show me that change, show me a diff of what's desired and what is actual, and I can click sync if I have manual sync turned on, or maybe I have auto sync turned on, and that means it will automatically be applied. Now, the great thing about this is that if you think about CICD pipelines, um, what people have built in the past with tools like Jenkins or things like that, typically for a robust software delivery process, you need to have robust logic. Uh, you need to create uh, steps for how these changes should be applied. You need to have thought about how failure will be handled. Now, a lot of work has gone into Argo CD to create a very robust and strong system for handling all of that kind of logic. Um, Argo CD goes beyond just monitoring a repo and applying. I mean, you could make a for loop in a bash script that just says, check out a repo, kubectl apply. Um, you can actually do things like delegate fields uh, to other controllers. So for example, let's say you have a pod autoscaler that's running and your system is getting hit with a lot of traffic. And so your pod autoscaler kicks in and starts boosting up the number of pods. 
Well, in Argo CD, I can say, hey, this field that determines the number of replicas, that's actually the responsibility of this controller over here. Don't make any changes and ignore any differences on this specific field. Whereas if you were just having a for loop in a bash script, you of course would overwrite and fight the controller that is trying to do the horizontal uh, pod auto scaling that you've enabled. Um, there are millions of other little scenarios like this, uh, ways that different controllers react. If you're using tools like um, security tools like Kyverno, how they modify resources. There are a lot of mutating webhook controllers running around out there. So Argo CD allows you to have full clarity about what's happening with all of your state and make decisions about in, in, in a policy kind of manner, which things should be de delegated to which controllers. So this is really, really powerful. Now, all of that sounds great from an operation standpoint, but what about me as a developer? I mentioned at the top of this Peloton, hey, 83% faster developer productivity. Wow, this is amazing. They're deploying more frequently. They're being more productive with their engineering resources. How does Argo help with that? This seems like it's just an ops tool, right? Well, no, because Argo actually has the ability to enable all kinds of developer productivity. First of all, even just having the exact desired state in Git in a format that everybody can see and having a nice UI in Argo that shows me, hey, this is the source of truth and this is where it's going. And these are the changes that have been made. And here's a history of those changes. Um, that means that it is a developer. I just have a better idea of what's going on. So this gives me this gives me some clarity if I wanna make changes about how those changes should be made, where they're gonna go and the exact process that's gonna take place. And that kind of predictability helps a lot. But a big part of this is also reducing the complexity of making a deployment. If you think about any software change that you make, it comes with an inherent risk. There is both a risk to not making the change if there are bugs or unrealized business value that is part of that change. Um, but of course there are risks to making the change. Perhaps it reacts in the system in an unpredictable way. And we've seen that as companies have more anxiety about delivering software changes, they deliver software changes more slowly. And of course, this creates a negative feedback loop where you have to do more and more testing, more and more validation. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the cost, the blast radius of failure, while also increasing the time to re uh, increasing um, our ability to respond to that failure and ultimately shrink the amount of time it takes us to recover. This is where Argo rollouts comes in. Argo rollouts works in this GitOps fashion. I know we're spending a lot of time on one slide. I hope you don't mind, bear with me. Um, Argo's rollouts works in the same fashion where you can use a declarative format, but it actually will allow you to very easily take any Kubernetes service and turn it into a blue green or canary release. And so you, you, you can expose either a small portion of your traffic to your new version and automatically roll back if there are issues. So suddenly the blast radius of failure is very small and the time to recover is seconds. So this means that you can have a lot less anxiety about making a change. But because Argo CD also shows you exactly what's changing, so you can see it before it even happens, this means you can be a lot more confident in the changes that you're making. For all of these reasons and a whole bunch more, Argo CD is extremely popular. Now, one final thing I was gonna mention is from a developer productivity standpoint, um, Argo CD also has the ability to create preview environments for developers. So if I am making a change um, and I open a pull request onto my application repo, Argo CD can automatically deploy that into a preview environment that is one-off that only exists for my pull request. And as soon as the pull request is shut down, it goes away. It's a feature called application sets and the pull request generator. So I hope this little introduction to Argo and GitOps has gotten you excited enough to go try it out. Now to help you do that, uh, we've actually created a training and certification and I'd love to give it away to you uh, for, I think it's about 80% off. Now, this is really just to cover our infrastructure costs and barely any of that as it is. This is the number one GitOps training and certification in the world. We have over 25,000 students. All you need to do is go to learning.codefresh.io and sign up for the bundle and use the code PLATFORMCON24, all uppercase, and it, this code will expire, um, and there are only a certain number of them. So 
go and do it, grab it. It's a really, really good deal. I mean, I think it's going to be like cost you like three bucks or something. It's, it's really just to cover a little bit of infrastructure. But um, this is where we're going to cover how you do all of this stuff. So you can uh, get your training and certification um, and uh, know exactly how GitOps can, can, you can, be, can be implemented. And so with that, I want to sign off. Thanks for having me, Platform.com. I hope this was interesting. If you haven't used Argo before, I hope this inspires you to go do so. Of course, it's an open source project and you're free to just go and use it. Um, and with that, have a great 2024.